Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel where we break down top level fights from international level Taekwondo players so you guys have stuff you can take home for your own fights. Now, I gotta tell you guys, there is a lot less editing that may go into this because I felt I was getting too caught up in the YouTube algorithm and had, over the last two weeks I've been downloading as much YouTube how to get views and how to get subs and I feel like I got too wrapped up in that. My analysis videos aren't as in-depth as they used to be. I really want to make sure that I'm delivering you guys value week after week because you guys tuning in really means a lot to me. So let's get started. Today we're breaking down Vargas from Colombia against Tomic from Croatia. Uh, I thought this match was very interesting because it shows a lot of variables on red side and how she slowly unveils her variables till the very end and unfortunately she doesn't come out with a victory. It's definitely something that we can use in our own game. Slow unveiling of our techniques that increases the difficulty for our partner as they fight. On Blue's side, I really like how Blue pokes and prods with her cut and even though she knows what her main weapon is and she knows the way she wants to score, she doesn't use it every time. She keeps it well hidden with a variety of other techniques that allow her to score consistently throughout the match. Out of the gate, we see blue here pressuring red a lot. That's not uh, uncommon, especially now. And um, for those of you guys who are a little bit more advanced, what I want you guys to take a note of is how often that blue is pressuring red in this situation. Kicks, I think her work to rest ratio, this is something I'm trying to analyze now, is work to rest ratios. I think her work to rest ratio is like one to two or like one to three. Only every couple seconds, blue's trying to push the fight to red. Nice try out the punch there. So, so far, um, the techniques we've seen out of red are cancel. I mean, she's been canceling. She's been sliding back and canceling. And um, if you watch, let's, if we replay from the beginning of the match, she's trying to create the forward pressure against blue. Normal if for, a normal for a smaller player to do that. Trying to bait that cut, and she's not only just baiting the cut, she's trying to gauge the range, the depth, and if blue likes to cut and flick after. Is that a proponent, or is it normally just a single leg cut? Cancel. Trying to get it again. That time moving out. That time to cancel. This time she's pretty sure. So red at this point, the reason she goes in for the punch is because she's pretty sure that blue is going to do the single leg cut, and it's something she can jump in on. So usually if she, it's a lot of flicking to the face, um, getting, even if you were to, to move it to the side the way Red did back here, usually if it's a flick to the face, that's something dangerous. Usually it's body and then up to the top. After watching Blue cut at her for the last like 17 seconds, you notice not too many times did she go to the face. So it's a good opportunity for a punch, especially after evading and moving the leg to the side on the first cut. Unfortunately, no score for Red here but still a well-timed punch. Blue going back to poking and prodding. I mean, she could... I'll just leave that to later. Blue does a really good job of hiding her offense and continuously to pressure with this cut so often that it almost makes Red forget what um, the potential that Blue could do. Trying to go in while she's off balance there. I'm only trying once for the face. And what I also would something to notice also on Blue's offense here is she's not she's starting to vary it now from just straight cutting because she knows Red's sitting on the punch. So it's no longer just straight cut every time. There's a cut flick, there's the back leg she does now. She's starting to vary. She's trying to unveil the offense a little bit more. That one's a cut hang. It's not all straight cuts. Both players are, are continuously changing the variables you're using. So if you notice, Red is not just standing there accepting being cut at. She's canceling, she's sliding back, she's sliding back, canceling, or canceling and then sliding back, and then trying to go on offense. Nice. So this follow-up worked really well because um, this whole match, the whole last 1 minute 15, uh, Blue has not followed up at all. She's, she's really just been poking, like single poke, Sometimes, you know, chopped. But beyond that, beyond that single or that little hop forward, there hasn't been any follow-up by Blue. And so you can even see by Red here after she does, she goes here, Blue goes for the punch. Red is like, 
in kind of in shock that there's a second kick coming because usually this whole last one minute 20 seconds that's happened one minute 21 seconds that's happening it's been a cut and back off a cut flick back off a cut hang extend back off back leg back off all singles and finally when blue goes for this kick it catches red very much by surprise so it's not just the cut and follow up and that's why it worked blue did a good job conditioning her opponent into thinking it's a single it's a single it's a single single kick and then boom and going for that follow-up that was a good punch by red um internationally sometimes they let that stuff go with the with the grabbing of the of the cut sometimes they don't depends on your ref they're for sure kind of strict uh you can see red smiling there she kind of got she kind of knows she got caught and she's walking back in Red's starting to change up her variables now too. She's starting to add the hook kick underneath. That's not something she wasn't throwing earlier. And Red going straight back to her game. Notice Red, even though she uh, she scored a point via follow-up, she doesn't go immediately back in for a cut and follow-up because that's a really good way to get countered, especially with good players. They're, they're gonna adjust to the way you got they got scored on just recently. So what Blue does is she cuts, she cut follow-up, got the point, and she's trying to condition red back into thinking it's just a single it's just a single it's just a single and then later she's gonna try and find opportunities for a follow-up or in this case for her next point nice the reason this point scores and the reason this worked really well for blue is because red has red's pattern um on the corner and especially instinctually seems like it's slide back cancel slide back on the one where she expected to cancel blue went in for the punch and as you're cutting someone and the pressure the situation becomes more high pressure they tend to rely more on their instinct and so so it's easier to trap it kind of dives into progression theory but that's a whole nother segue so besides blue pressuring red and creating the opportunity for herself recognizing the pattern where it's slowed on the second cancel that's where she punched uh notice red's ring position here so number one Ring position of red here is she's really close to the edge already. Secondly, blue has been pressuring a lot, which means that red's posture to counter the aggression has to be like, is a little bit more prone to standing your ground because you can't just be giving ground, otherwise you're just gonna fall out the ring. So as blue is pressuring her, red is more prone to standing in place. The second thing that prompts her to stand a little bit more in place is here at the edge of the ring, she can't go back anymore. So that's another variable that's adding to red not moving back, especially here during blue's punch so she's at the edge now she cut she landed a little bit close she knows red's probably not going to slide back because this distance here is super super minimal so the variables of red being at the edge of the ring and the other variable she's been pressuring her and she's kind of thrown on the pattern of slide back cancel slide back cancel and on this one where red was expecting to have to cancel the cut that's where blue punched all of those factors all contributed to blue getting this punch in so really good job by blue here setting that up in the last final seconds uh, so we have blue going for that headshot there part of the reason she's going for this headshot is because the score in the last few seconds of the round is four to zero and that means that the person who's down is going to be a little bit more point hungry a little bit more uh, aggressive to try and get points and so a little bit more prone to standing in place and defending versus sliding back and especially against this kind of pressure near the edge of the ring it's not a bad bet from blue that red is going to be sliding in here because she's near the edge she's down points and she just got scored on so that tends to bring out a little bit more aggression in people and so i think that this headshot by blue is actually a pretty pretty decent call red also really good at hiding her weapons this is something she could have been doing before is getting on the inside and trying for the head kick which almost scored this is something that red has not thrown the whole first round there has been no inclination, as far as I know, that this back leg can go to the face after dodging something like that. Really, really close there by Red. Or, you know, maybe it hit and just didn't register. So here we are at the start of round two. We notice here that Red's opting for a different strategy. She switched stance to close stance. I like fighting an open stance because I feel like their only real options are if they ran, they have a really good flank uh, shot to my backside, which is not normally high scoring so that's an availability and then if they want to score with their front leg from an open stance meaning you know both our sides are facing the same way 
a front leg hook kick is also one of their options to the body but that's also not as high scoring as like the front leg round so i personally like fighting someone taller than me who likes to use their cut in an open stance unless i'm about to spin or i have something else uh, but we can see red here opting for a different strategy she did fight open stance before she's fighting close stance now and i feel like it's to deny croatia the punch Ooh, very nice part of the reason for the switch is to set up looks like columbia's back leg try and get around to the back of the head so we already know this variable is croatia's cut columbia's defense here is to try and get around that it does a great job here by canceling trying to set it up notice the defense is still kind of the same as before it's still in place cancel or slide back or slide back cancel one of those variables and then on one of the cuts where she feels like she has a timing down she's able to blitz in get around it and then almost get her in the head i mean if she was i feel like she's just missing it by like an inch like really really small margin but still the timing there and the idea to go around to the back of the head there really good blue starting to vary between cut single cut and then single cut flick and red trying to change the variables as well, both sides. Trying to shuffle the deck a little bit. Nice punch. The last time Croatia punched was last round. And then we're here 50 seconds in and she, as far as I could see, blue didn't really give any signs of doing that. He's varying the cut and the cut flick. And so essentially what she's doing is she's reconditioning red into believing it's only a cut a cut hang, a flick to the face maybe, and here after she's kind of reconditioned Red into uh, standing her ground, it's a good setup for this. Because she hasn't thrown that for the last minute and a half, so this kind of a setup and this kind of, it takes a long time to redisguise the punch coming, and I think it's because she doesn't want to give up, you know, maybe a, a headshot which is a counter to the punch. She doesn't want to give up a headshot, so she takes a lot of time to really lull Red back to sleep into her conditioning, thinking it's just a cut, it's just a cut flick, it's just a cut. And then finally, in one like a minute in, she goes in for that punch again. So Red here changing strategies, going back to close stance, and I think because she had a lot of close headshots last round, like there's a couple headshots that were well timed, well placed, it was just a little bit off. I think she's, she tries to fight blue here on the line because she wants to be in range to do those headshots again. So that's why instead of like sliding back, she's trying to fight blue exactly where she is. So on that one, like blue cut in instead of moving back or canceling and then trying to do something, it was straight into a counter kick. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out for red though because it looks like this is kind of blue's forte. And so here she is landing points and then blue here able to follow up later and gets it lands a headshot but it was a good idea by red to try and change the whole tactic instead of luring her in luring her in luring her in luring her in and then trying to fight there i think it was a good tactic for her to try and fight her on the line and see how blue handles the counter pressure and if she can if for example that was a hole in blue's game that would have been exposed at the start of third round then they have a whole two minutes to play with that idea so now an unfortunate blue followed up caught red red knows it Nice punch. As a smaller player, it's mission critical. It's so imperative that you have a punch down and a punch is in your game because the forward threat of a punch really changes the, the area a taller player has to kick because to counter a punch, usually from a taller player to headshot. So that means they have to get their foot up to your face before you're able to slide in this way, which means their kicking area is going to be here versus if you don't actually have a forward presence, all they have to worry about is kicking where you are or where you where you move back so they only have like one or two options pretty much but if you have the ability to blitz and you're able to close the distance fast to intercept that they have to get their foot here it decreases the chances of them knowing exactly where you're going to be you having a good punch be makes it a lot harder for them to use their front leg against you especially because if they're worried you have to kick short all the time and they do kick short and they mess up then it's easy for you to counter kick so super important as a smaller player for you to have the forward pressure to punch and essentially a punch is just a really well timed blitz and as long as you have your arm out there with you know some proper form you get a point for that so it's almost like you get a point for being able to time the distance well 
as a smaller player, like that's very essential. You have to compensate for your lack of reach with something else. That could be or something else. What I also like about the punch is it'll cause your opponents to either want to close the distance on you as well and try and punch or try and kick you on your way in, which gets them to stand in place. And standing in place is really, really good to set up spins. Yeah. So in this one, blue's fading back a little bit. And she's able to get the point and catch blue by surprise here because red has not shown a single sign that she's gonna spin. It comes out and surprises blue. And so now for the next one minute and six seconds, you're gonna find it a lot harder for blue to score in this situation. But I think red should have turned to a little bit earlier to give her a little bit more time um, if it had worked. Oh my gosh. On red's part, she's timing these really, really well. It's just unfortunate. It's not enough sensors hitting. But now she's doing a great job trying to crowd blue's crowd blue space. And so blue's counter to that, if someone's doing this to you, is you either have to try and counter in place, which is what blue's doing. It's getting extremely dangerous, as you can see here. Like she's getting spun on a lot. Or if someone moves in on you, you have to be able to slide backwards and then try and counter from there. Blue, I don't think, is used to someone doing this, and which is why she's not opting for the slide back, which is slightly safer for her. Good punch though by blue, good retaliation. She's not just gonna sit here and let red dictate the whole fight. That's one of the counters to slide back if you're worried about someone doing this. And that kind of negates both the spin, uh, which red has been doing and negates the punch. And so it would force red to use a lot more forward before she engages, or at least force blue to the edge of the ring before she tries one of those. That way blue no longer has the option to move. So red here doing a good job though, trying to set those spins up. She timed those last three spin kicks almost on point and had she hit any one of those, the score would have been tied. Or if, you know, the refs gave the punches when I feel like there's good punches going up. So Red here doing a really, really good job keeping a lot of her defensive variables varied and she's setting a lot of traps for Croatia that she didn't show in any of the other rounds. So there's no more time for Blue to go back, ask her coach, what else can I do in this situation if she's out of ideas? Red has kind of done what Korea usually does, which is the adjustment in the third round where there's no longer any time for you to go back to your coach. Uh, you're kind of stuck in there with someone with a higher game plan, and you got to hope that you survive the match, which Blue is doing a great job of doing and keeping at bay now. Great job overall by Red to set up those traps. A lot of those very close. If any one of those hit, the game would have been tied. Like those last three or four spins that were really well timed and just unfortunately didn't hit the sensors, the game would have been tied right now. They would have been going into golden point. Or if two of them hit, she would have won. So really good job by Red keeping those defensive variables buried and setting up the traps and slowly unveiling. She didn't unveil all the cards in the first round. She unveiled a little bit more in the second and then finally in the third round in the last minute she unveiled all the cards. And I feel like she did that a little bit earlier. She would have had a little bit more time. With Blue though, I really like how Blue buried, kept her varying her attacks. And even though she knows she wants to kick and follow up and that was the main score or she wants to kick and punch later. She didn't do that one right after the other, right after the other, right after the other. She, she, did, she got her point. She varied her attack, she poked, added a lot more cuts in there, almost conditioned Red to forget, and then she went in for it again. Like just as Red's kind of forgetting, or Red's kind of coming up with the counter strategy, that's where Blue came in again, got more points. Thank you again for tuning in and sticking with me through the whole learning curve of this YouTube stuff, and I really appreciate it. Please like or subscribe if you found this valuable, and I'll see you guys next week.